Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over a few items and we're going to start with this little frame. And uh, it actually has plastic in the front of it and uh, obviously I don't want that there but I'm going to go ahead and leave it there so that I can paint this. And um, my idea for this one is uh, if you can remember the chalk uh, wall hangings that's kind of what I want to make this like. I want it to, I'm going to paint it, uh, and I want it to uh, have the feel of chalk. And I want it to be kind of a one-piece chalk wall hanging, if that makes sense. So I'm taking some plaster of Paris, and I'm mixing it pretty thick, uh, actually to about the consistency of um, yogurt, maybe. Uh, this is going to harden, and it doesn't have to be that thick, uh, but I didn't want to have any leak through, so I just thought it would be best to start with a thicker base. And because of that, I wasn't able to use much of this leftover because it just hardened too fast. Uh, but what I'm doing is just filling this up just to the level of the the. Um, the first level of the frame if that makes sense so it didn't take this obviously long at all to harden because I had it mixed so thick um, but I just kind of smoothed it out and and uh, leveled it with the frame and then when I got done putting all that I needed in it then I just kind of took the frame and tapped it on uh, on the table to just kind of help layer that or level that out and it just took a couple times doing that and it was really good and level so then i just put it aside and let it dry and now i've painted it with two coats of the color buttercream and now i'm going to add this medallion um, mold to it so uh, this is a redesign mold and i'm pretty sure the name of it is medallion i'll try to look that up and add that in the description but because this one is very very detailed I wanted to really really put the cornstarch in here and make sure that I got it coated really well uh, before I tried to uh, make this mold so once I got this mold uh, made then I'm just going to glue it on wet and uh, because I want to make sure that it molds well to my frame and then I also, uh, oh, and I forgot to mention that I used Type Bond to glue that on. Um, you could use Gorilla Glue, or I'm sure there are other glues you could use, but for me, the Type Bond works really well uh, with these molds. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it uh, while it's wet also, uh, because I have really good luck with that. And um, obviously, before you do any kind of finish on it, you need to let it dry, but... Um, I'm just going to glue this on while it's wet and because it's so detailed I don't want to mess that up so I'm going to have to just add my glue uh, to, the, to the base first instead of to my mold. And now I'm adding some brown glaze to this because I want to have a, a lot of depth of color here. So I, just, so I just brushed that glaze on the entire piece and then uh, I just took a paper towel and just wiped away what I could. And then once that was dry well, then I'm just dry brushing that um, buttercream color back over the top. And then I'll just finish it up with a clear uh, sealer. So I just took it outside once it was dry well and sprayed it with a clear matte finish. And to dry brush you just take your brush and I'm using a fan brush here 
uh, but you just you can use a chip brush or just any kind of uh, brush with fine uh, bristles and you just put a little bit of paint on the tip of it and wipe most of it off and just kind of rub it across and just add a little bit of color at a time. And for the second item, I thrifted this uh, pair of uh, wall sconces. And uh, this is uh, very cottage core, I think. But I'm not crazy about the cutout hearts. And I know that the cutout hearts go with the cottage core, but I, it's just something that I just don't like. So I'm going to cover that up. And I thought the best way to cover it up would be just to add a clay mold. So I have this little cameo mold here that I'm going to make and I'll just make two of those and glue them right over the top of that hole and as it turns out they were just large enough to cover it and be able to glue it around uh, the wood around the heart. So it was a perfect fit and, and that worked really well to cover my, um, my heart. And uh, I decided also to remove the little candle holders on the bottom because uh, although those are cute, um, I don't really think people use those tall candles much anymore. And so by removing those, you can set the pillar candles on it if you want to use it for candles. Uh, especially if you wanted to use some that were battery operated. Uh, but then you could also use them as a little shelf. So uh, I just felt like they, uh, it was a lot more versatile just to take those off. And so I end up unscrewing those and you just take those off by unscrewing a little, one screw just in the center of the little candle holder and it comes right off. And now it's time to paint these, but I'm going to listen to a viewer that said that I need to save on my hands, and I agree with her, and uh, try to make my distressing easier. So, uh, since I'm not always going to be able to, uh, to wet distress this uh, early, uh, I may get caught up doing something else, I decided to take her advice and use the candle wax. So we're going to see how that works on this. Uh, I do it occasionally. Some things I feel like it works well on and some things maybe not so much. Uh, but as it turns out, it did work out on this. So I just make sure and add plenty of candle wax here. And, uh, and then I'm going to paint this and I'm going to give it two coats of the color sea glass. Uh, so uh, I'll put two coats on this, let it dry well. And then I'm also going to be using the brown glaze on this because I just love the look that it gives the sea glass and I needed to warm it up because um, the next item that I'll be doing is a set of pictures and I felt like those pictures really needed some warmth. So um, 
so I'll be doing uh, the brown glaze on uh, on several items here and um, and then that will help seal my chalk paint as well So now, because I used um, the, the wax on this, the candle wax on this, I'm able to take a damp cloth and very gently rub away some of that paint. And uh, it actually saved me a lot of elbow grease here. And now, like I said, these can be used for either a candle or any other kind of decor that you want to set on it. And now I've had this cast iron do door stop for a long time and this is uh, i have a lot of new cast iron in my store but this one is actually very old and all the paint is worn off of it uh, and i hated to paint it because i know that uh, that changes the value of it uh, but uh, it just hasn't gotten any attention in the store at all. So uh, I think it's just so pretty and there's so much detail to be brought out. And this thing is very heavy. Um, so I thought the best way to bring out that detail would just to be paint, 
to paint this with the color buttercream and I forgot to use my candle wax. Uh, cast iron is really tough to distress if you let it dry at all. Uh, so um, I thought I really needed to use the candlestick on this. So I just went ahead and went over it anyway, even over that wet paint and even that worked. So um, the candle wax was a really big help on this item. And then I'm just going to paint it two coats of the color buttercream on the front and the back. And then I'll let that dry well. And then I'll be able to wet distress this. Uh, I didn't want to uh, use sandpaper on it. Because anytime you use sandpaper on a metal, you, you risk and you're very likely to pull uh, down to uh, a shinier um, metal. And that's not a good look. So... Uh, I really needed to wet distress this one and wet distressing worked really well and then once this was done then uh, I sprayed this with a clear matte finish, finish. I think I used Rust-Oleum and then this item was complete. And again, as you can see here, this distressed really well with just a damp cloth. And then I'll finish it off with a clear sealer. And now I thrifted these two beautiful pictures and as you can see they have kind of an orangish look to them. I think they're actually wood but it had that look that sometimes people uh, paint to make it look like wood if that makes sense. I don't know if you've seen that but I just don't think that's a pretty look at all and it has too much orange in it so I knew I needed to change these frames. And I gave these two coats of the color sea glass because there is just a little bit of that color in these pictures in the prints that's in that are inside and i give these two coats let it dry well and then i did the brown glaze on these because um, i felt like it needed a lot more warmth i did love this color on them but it did need some warmth because of that um, print inside and I didn't get uh, where I added the brown glaze to these filmed, but like I said, I did add that brown glaze. And then the last item that I did was a haul tree for my friend, uh, Loretta. So she had uh, asked me to paint this for her. So I painted this uh, with two coats of the color buttercream because of the rich stain that was on it. Uh, I had to do a coat of shellac on it to keep from having any bleed through uh, per a couple of my uh, viewers and it worked really well to keep the bleed through. So thank you to those ladies who advised me uh, to use that. So I used the candle method of distressing on this one and gave this two coats of the color buttercream and let that dry well and then like i said i just took a damp cloth and uh, wiped some uh, distressing on t on that i did take these hooks off because they are brass and they're just um, 
really aged brass, and my friend thought she might want them distressed black. Uh, but what I decided to do here is just take them off and uh, do the buttercream on the stand and then put these back on like they are and let her see them that way before she decides she wants me to paint them. And then we'll just decide from there. But I thought they would look good just this color. And then, like I said, we'll see what she thinks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.